I went for a run every single day for a week, switched out my workouts to just running, and here's what happened. All right, we are talking all things running. It seems like every TikTok really is running. Or the amount of people I follow who are doing half marathons, marathons, signing themselves up for these races. Even when I go outside, I swear, it just feels like way more people are running. I guess the objective of this video was to kind of see what all the fuss is about. I set myself a little seven day running challenge. I went out and I went for a run every single day as a non-runner. So normally on a weekly basis, I like to do a variety of lifting at the gym. And then I also love doing reformer Pilates classes. That's me and my like fitness workout routine in a nutshell for you. So not a runner. I like many of us was one of those people back in 2020 during the first lockdown who I actually joined a running club. I remember we did like 5Ks quite often and then we even a couple times did 10Ks and achieved that. So I think since I know in my mind, like I've been able to do that before. Oop, you go. I just wanted to see how hard it would be to get back into that. It almost feels like running's a bit of a trend right now. So for this week, I want to set myself the challenge of doing varied runs. What I mean by that is running locally, running on a treadmill, and also running with someone else. I tried intuitive running, so as in like not having a set distance goal. But then I also did runs where I had a certain goal. But let's talk about the obvious. I do not recommend you do this. This was purely for an experiment. I'm gonna talk about the struggles I had being a non-runner going into running every single day for seven days. I did miss a day, so spoilers. So yes, whilst I recommend you don't do this challenge how I have, I do hope you come away from this video maybe wanting to give running a try. This week has been incredible. I found such a spark and love for running this week. I'm excited to tell you all about it. Here is how my week went. Hello, welcome to day one of this running challenge. It is Monday. I really can't lie, it is um, 7 p.m. It's almost half past seven. Because today I have felt so unmotivated. It's really bad, I feel like I'm gonna have to do these runs in the morning because if I leave them for later in the day, I very much don't feel like I'm in the mood. Not feeling on day one. So what I'm doing is I'm going for a run nearby. I'm not gonna set myself like a distance goal. Try go for like half an hour. I'm gonna use the Strava app. I ordered a running vest which arrived today. I don't know who I think I am. This was just off of Amazon. Cute. Day one, I went for a run in my local park, which was quite nice. So I was out the door and then back home within basically half an hour. Compared to like going to the gym or going to a workout class, that usually is gonna take out, you know, over an hour of my day. If I have a really busy day, I can very easily justify in my head that I don't have time to work out. So I think running for me was like, that's such a good workout for my really busy days. Since I had put my phone away in my little running vest, it meant that I wasn't like tracking my speed, my distance at all. I felt quite good actually going in the evening. I felt like my body was quite loose. So I did a distance of 4K in 25 minutes. I think maybe I stopped like a couple times. There was a point where I was going uphill. And that gave me such like, runner's high. The endorphins I was experiencing, I felt so good. And then just like really proud of my body to see I had done that in like under 30 minutes. When I was running as well, like it was such a pretty sunset, running through a park, I can be really lazy with not stretching at the gym when like weightlifting and stuff, which I know is bad, but I've never paid the consequences for it. And I think that's maybe why I haven't learned my lesson. Whereas this week, you'll see, but later on in the week, I started to kind of pay the consequences of not stretching. One of my biggest tips for beginners trying to get into running is make it 
easy for yourself in terms of like the gear and things you're wearing. You do not want to be out on a run and thinking about how much your feet are rubbing in your shoes. Back when I ran a lot more regularly in 2020, I remember I used to hate like carrying my phone. So I really liked this running vest just from Amazon. This was like 30 pounds. It has quite a few compartments like for your keys. So I would sometimes have my purse in here, my phone would go in here and I have like the bigger phone. These um, little like flimsy bottles. I mean, they're meant for running. I don't really recommend these ones. I, maybe I'm using them wrong. And then you guys saw I used my shocks little earbuds and I continued to use these every single day this week. You will not see me go on a run without these now. And so these are the Shox Open Ear True Wireless Earbuds. Shox actually is a pioneer in the industry of open ear technology. They use special air conduction technology, which actually keeps your ear canals open while still being able to maintain your like private listening. Shox are actually very, very kindly sponsoring this part of the video. First of all, this actually comes in beige and black. I love the beige. I think it's so pretty. And I just love the little case that it comes in. So why these are so important for me when I was going on a run is because I want to be able to hear my surroundings. When you're running down a busy street, there's traffic, or even just like running in a park by yourself, you still wanna have that awareness of your surroundings. But I'm going for a run for a half an hour. Like I want entertainment, I want music in my ears. So that's why shocks are amazing because they have not jeopardized on sound quality, but you also still feel safe. That's why these are perfect for every day, not just for running. I cannot walk around London with like noise cancellation on. It makes me feel so just uncomfortable. Because of the open ear design as well, these are incredibly comfortable. They have ultra soft, dual layered liquid silicon. They also feel super secure, so you can wear them on a run. I also like how hygienic these are. They keep your ear canal dry. So basically it prevents the ear from becoming like moist and painful. I also did not charge these once this week and they did not dial me in. I just think shocks have absolutely nailed it with this product and so if you guys want to get your hands on these I could not recommend them enough I will leave the link in my description bar I'll also have it on the screen right now and a huge thank you to Shox for sponsoring this part of the video welcome to day two of our running challenge it is what's the time it is almost 5 p.m. I set a cheeky little half six alarm this morning to to get up and go because I had an appointment at half nine so it would have had to be a nice early session and to be fair like that's when I get up to go to the gym anyway but I just could not get up I just want to stress I 100% I'm in my luteal stage of my menstrual cycle so like that week before your period where you're cranky you're tired um everything just feels harder so I told myself it's fine we're just gonna go later for a habit to form you have to be doing it consistently for a good amount of time and so this doesn't feel natural this still feels like a lot of effort just to get up and go but i know i'll feel really good once i'm going plan is to go to the same park my goal this week was still to be somewhat intuitive and listen to my body not to push myself to go out and do super long runs because that's just completely not realistic yeah i wasn't really in the mood to go again but then once i got going i felt so good and so on tuesday i did 4.8k in 31 minutes. I was sweating a ton. It was hot this day, which makes it harder. And I was not tracking my distance or anything again on this day. So if I had known I was at 4.8, I probably would have pushed myself to get to the 5K mark. By this point, I was feeling like a superhuman. I Running, I think, brings you a whole other level of appreciation for your body and what your body can do. But let's talk about day three. Day three was not a good day. Day three, I started to have some aches some pains, not in places you wanna have them as well. And I was like, shit, you are not invincible. Girl, you gotta stretch before you run, especially when doing a challenge like this. So I was hoping to go Wednesday evening, but I like wasn't having that great a day. I really wasn't in the mood. I had to think about what kind of message I wanted to send out with this video. And I never think it's healthy to push yourself in that way. So I didn't run on Wednesday. That was the one day I missed. And then we got back to it on Thursday for day four. Day four was very stop start. I'm not even sure if you can call it a run. The time I was actually running for was apparently 22 minutes. I did 3.3K. 
but I did a whole tube journey and I also stopped at a cafe. It was a very leisurely run, like zero goals. I just wanted to go to Notting Hill. Because my body was really feeling it, I was like, I have to go slow and steady. When I was running, it was it was way tougher than Monday and Tuesday. My stamina levels felt good that day. It was definitely just um, aches and pains letting me down. So on day five, I decided to switch things up and try the treadmill. I'm glad I did this because running on a treadmill versus running out on the streets in a park on grass, all very different. I did a really long stretch like over 10 minutes and it felt so good. My, my body was crying out for it. It felt so, so good. When I got on that treadmill, I think the first five minutes felt a little bit tough and then my body just eased into it. I definitely felt the benefits of stretching. This was also an early morning workout. So that was nice. It was just a really nice way to start my day. I felt really proud of my body that day. Definitely felt runner's high. Oh, it's Saturday. It's actually like five, PM. I've had such a busy morning um, and I'm not in the mood at all. I am so tired. My body's tired, but I'm determined to finish this challenge we have today and tomorrow left. I didn't want to do just like a five day a week. I wanted to do a full blown week, seven days. Yeah, we're doing a little run on the treadmill today. Quite enjoyed it yesterday. I like don't feel that sore today, but I'm sure I'll feel a little achy once I start running. I'm thinking I'm just gonna go for like 20 minutes again because that's what I did yesterday. Except I'm gonna just up my pace a little. So this was Saturday. Saturday, 5 p.m. ish. So nice to see people at the gym. And me and Will were talking about this. We were saying like, there is just more interest, I think, with people taking health and wellness, fitness a bit more seriously nowadays. Like Will was saying like a few years ago because he's been gymming way more consistently and for way longer than I have. And he was like, you would never go to the gym on a Saturday evening, late afternoon and have it be busy. Our gym was so busy. I had a really good stretch and I upped my pace a bit from the day before. I wanted to kind of go for 20 minutes again, see how much further I could go. So I did 4K by 24 minutes, but for the first three minutes I walked, which I think also really helped warm me up even more. But yeah, day six, I felt really proud of myself because there was a time where I definitely would not be able to run on the treadmill for more than 10 minutes. And the fact that I got to like 24 minutes felt amazing. I was so, so proud of my body. I felt really good. Day seven, which is actually today. Today is the last day of my running challenge and I went for a run this morning. Hello guys, welcome to the final day of this running challenge. I'm feeling good, I'm feeling ready, but I'm also really, really tired. So the plan today is to go for a little Sunday morning run with Will. I think it'll be exciting doing a run with someone else. I went for a run with Will, someone who's a lot fitter, has better stamina than me. Beautiful views of like running along the River Thames. It was so nice and there were so many people out for a run. It felt so good and literally halfway Will turned to me and he was like, this is actually really cool. I'm like, glad we're doing this. And Will definitely motivates me to keep going. Like I would have stopped way earlier if it weren't for Will. So we did 5.5K in 36 minutes. We were going quite slow and steady. The biggest thing I felt was just like the difference with my stamina. I genuinely think even from this one week, I've felt a difference with my stamina. There are apps like Couch to 5K, those kind of things that are really good. Or I know for a lot of people, they sign up for a race, even maybe like a local 5K that's in a couple months and that gives you enough time to train. Am I gonna be running half marathons anytime soon? No, I don't think so, but that wasn't the purpose of this video. It was more because I think incorporating running into your fitness routine has so many benefits, not only physically, but what I really felt this week was mood wise. This whole week, you have to remember that if you're able to run, going on a run, is, it is a privilege. And I think when you think of it that way, healthy mindset shift of like, I get to go on a run rather than I have to go on a run makes all the difference. You appreciate it so much more. It makes it way more enjoyable. Something that surprised me as well over this week was like not caring about what I would look like running around in like a sports bra. There was one day I went out in shorts, but running was a way for me to like really not care about that and not think about that, which I loved. It is important to remember like running is amazing for your health, but it is also very tough on your joints. It can be over glamorized online. Like I know I wasn't doing the longest runs. There are 
so many incredible people who go out for 12Ks on their Sunday. And I know when you're putting your body under that kind of stress for periods of like an hour, I've heard people say they experience really severe bloating or like feeling sick. So I think it's just important to remember that sometimes when you see this stuff online, it is overly glamorized. So that's it. That's my little conclusion for this video. It's the end of the week and I just feel really good about myself. I, I'm really glad I pushed myself on my comfort zone. And that's why I love YouTube because it encourages me to kind of do things I normally wouldn't. Thank you for watching guys. If you decide to start your running journey, I hope you love it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Love you.